Chetlin. It is 4.32. Prior to adoption of the agenda and, and that uh, council meeting be conducted electronically by uh, Zoom due to the prevalence of COVID-19 and the provincial state of emergency. Okay, uh, agenda, adoption of the agenda. If we have any uh, new business for the agenda, councilors? We need the opening statement, your worship. Okay, we shall get it read. Thank you, councilor. Okay, uh, Dan or Carol, let's read the opening statement okay. and continue. As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interests. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Uh, any new business from counselor, counselors, anything to add? Not seeing any adoption of the agenda. Motion to adopt the agenda um, being conducted via Zoom. Second. Seconder. I'll second that. Okay, Jocelyn or Councilor Disher, all, uh, all those in favor? Gary. Okay, uh, first item minutes. Motion to receive minutes M1. Second. Okay, that's May, May 3rd, 2021. Anything in there that, uh, any omissions? I have any a question. Discussion? Yes, Laura. I, I was just wondering how the grad costs made out with the banners. Like I was just wondering when we would see them. Yeah. If, if I could uh, direct that question to Ellen. Ellen's been working with the grad committee. Um, okay. So the um, we've been working with the grad class and um, school district 59. And there's two bodies with the PHO orders. So um, the RCMP and us, we're all trying to work together to be able to do it. It'll either be um, hopefully a, a normal parade at this point, but with the Ministry of Education, they have different regulations, but we're hopefully there are reverse parade or an optional of a normal parade by the time that they're ready to do it. If they're going to do it outside of the school function, it's probably mainly the best way to go at this point. But with the orders changing after the 15th of June, we're very optimistic that we should be able to do that. No, uh, sorry, Ellen. I was actually talking about the banners. Oh, sorry. Yes, they've ordered them and they should be here any day. And then um, we will be installing them as soon as they're installed. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay, uh, we've got uh, M1, and we had a motion and a seconder. Uh, any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Here we go. Uh, minutes of the public hearing held on May 3rd, 2021. Motion. motion. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Um, M3, minutes of special regular council meeting held on May 10th, 2021. Motion to accept. Councilor Dazunkowski, second. Any second. Uh, Councilor Wark, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. M4 minutes of uh, the special regular council meeting held on May 12th, 2021. Motion to receive. Motion to be made by Councillor Galbraith. Second by Mel. Councillor Deck. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. 
Okay, moving on to uh, delegation delegations. We have uh, Julia Nelson from the Community Arts Council. Julia, are you uh, there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I sure can. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Julia Nelson on behalf of the Chetwin Community Arts Council. Um, I am going to direct you all to the image that was sent to you, uh, the design for a public art piece that we're hoping to erect on Chetwind uh, District Green Space located between the um, Visitor Center and City Hall. So does everybody have that image in front of them? Yeah, okay, well, let me know if you go. <laughs> This image was, uh, it, it's a, clearly a picture frame that visitors and local people alike can stop and have their photo taken with uh, check with BC at the top, nice little design designed by one of our local artists. We have put all the funds together and we are going to commission this piece um, in honor of one of our past presidents, Brenda Maisie. So, Many of us do know Brenda. She was uh, richly involved in our community. Um, she was a district councillor. She sat on many, many boards, but in, she was with us on the Arts Council and at my side when we revitalized the Arts Council that you all know and love now. And she passed away a few years ago. And in my heart, I wanted to always do something in honor of her and her time and efforts and really her real vibrancy. So this public piece that we'd like to erect is um, going to be a gift to our community in honor of Brenda. We would put a memorial plaque there as well. Um, and the only real thing that we are asking our community for and asking you for today is to allow us to put it in this very, uh, very prevalent spot. The parking is good there. But also, if you'll notice, it frames that beautiful mountain um, looking towards Tumblr Ridge. And that would have been the same mountain that Brenda would have woken up to and looked at every day because it's the same direction her home faced. Um, it seems like all the pieces fall together really perfectly. And, and that's what we'd like to do. So I'm open to feedback if, and questions. I just have a question. Go ahead. So what other than the wood that's obvious what is the structure made out of is it metal or something uh, it, yes it's it's laser cut metal that uh is painted and i i believe will never rust it's similar design or similar material to like the signs that you'll see at people's driveways rochelle mm -hmm. if okay. you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. That, and that that would be professionally cut at uh, peace valley industries locally perfect well it's absolutely beautiful and uh, I got a question. I got a question for Carol. Uh, the pro the green space she's talking about. Uh, what is that? Is that any plan for that besides what uh, Julia is asking us for? Any plans for that area? Go um, ahead. Staff, it's, yeah. um, it's part of the boulevards that the district maintains uh, every year. So uh, councils. Um, viewpoint is important in that. So if council makes a motion that it can be located there, then um, that would be our press, our priority. Okay, good. And just uh, something that you brought up, uh, Julia, was that uh, not not a question, just a comment and a good one on uh, on uh, Maisie that she she was part of the Friendship Center too, uh, prior to, I think you uh, being here. So she did uh, sit on a few boards and councils and whatever she did, because they were a big part of our community, the Macy's and uh, it was very, it's very important. And uh, it, it is very important to you, I see through your uh, diligence and wanting to do this. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you're doing this for uh, Brenda and, uh, yeah, I had, uh, had the opportunity to work with her at the Friendship Center uh, on the board, and I believe she might have worked there at one time. So I'm not too uh, sure about the work, but I did uh, sit on the board with her at the Friendship Center. Yeah, I my feeling is that she put so much, so much love and energy into this community that um, 
we would be doing wrong by not honoring her, right? And I think that it's gonna be, uh, it was really, really great because I was uh, with one of my fellow Arts Council members and we were scouting it out, taking that photo that you see before you and who should drive around the corner from the district office but her husband, Keith Maisie. And he came over and I said, this is what our plan is, Keith. And I just know that there's gonna be such great pride from himself and the, his, their entire family to know that, I mean, it's kind of a small token, but but it's very, very Chetwind. And I, oh, I, I missed one small portion of what else I need from, <laughs> from the district is, we're gonna need a little bit of help probably from public works to actually erect the piece. We'll have, we're going to pay for everything, but probably that would be very helpful, so long as you can spare an hour or two. I guess it's up to you, Carol. We'll say uh, if we decide to uh, do something, then Public Works will we'll, yeah. uh, get it done. If we, uh, yes, once council, council uh, gets voted to do this stuff, and if council uh, gives the okay, uh, Carol and uh, Deanne will uh, will get her done. Okay. Were there any more questions or comments for me? Janet, uh, Councillor Wark has one. Thanks, Julia and the Arts Council. I, I really um, have a lot of admiration for Brenda Maisie and I'm, I'm really happy to see this recognition. Such an important part of Chetwin. Um, I do just wonder if something like this would be movable in case it needed to be without being damaged, just in case. I'm not sure what that would ever look like, but um, I think it's a good idea that we are able to move it in case we need to. Yeah, I, I would say yes. I would say that it's gonna be kind of one complete structure that we're gonna put in the ground, but if it needed to be moved at any time, I'm quite certain that you guys could do that. I'm sure there'll be some kind of paperwork. It, it will be a gift to the district of Chetwin. So at that point, really, I suppose you could do whatever you wanted with it. Great, thank you. Any more questions? Any more? I don't see any more questions, Julia. So I believe, uh, yes, we will. Uh, let you know in uh, one second, I believe. <laughs> so, anyway, it's very, very good, very good stuff. Uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and make the motion that we erect this uh, beautiful frame in the location that Julia suggests in honor of the amazing. And I would second that. We got a motion, we got a seconder. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Gary. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you, Council. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll be in touch about the completion of the construction of the project and hoping that we can have kind of a grand unveiling all together. Perfect. Okay. Hey, thank you. Bye, guys. Hey, thank you, Julia. Thank you. Bye. Wow. The good stuff in life, right? Great, great stuff. No bylaws. Committee, regional district. Uh, regional district wants to build a library. He's mentioned that over at the PRRD uh, that he had uh, had a contractor to do a little bit of planning. That's uh, Director Rose. So uh, that is their uh, prerogative. So we will uh, have more in the future from the PRRD on this matter. Uh, it's been given to uh, council and uh, the council now is, uh, is talking with the PRRD and uh, that's from the PRD and waste management is a big thing always with the PRD. Uh, so we're, uh, they extended our uh, life of our landfill by uh, I believe it's eight to 10 years. 
So that's good for, for us in Shetland where we don't have to take it from here. Well, actually it's a PRD land, but take it from here when we do take it to the location and transfer it out. So we still have uh, approximately eight to 10 years. So that, that's a good thing for, uh, for the PRD and uh, for us uh, with the transportation. And as for uh, the mayor this week, uh, Chetlin, uh, we heard about uh, what happened in Kamloops with the uh, residential school. I hit the mayor hard because uh, my father was uh, was a uh, is a well was a survivor because he has passed away since. Uh, uh, but uh, he had uh, went to a residential school in uh, Gruard. Uh, it was called a Gruard Mission in Alberta. And uh, thinking that he was a child there and the children that were lost or found down in uh, Kamloops and some of the places probably throughout this land we call Canada that we were uh, subject to and brought and opened our eyes to that children were dying in these places and not the correct number was given to how many children were, were dying in those places, either from starvation or from being ultimately uh, killed for whatever reason. So this part here kind of bothered me and I uh, just want to make sure that everybody understands that killing the children is not acceptable anywhere in the world. It should not be acceptable anywhere. It shouldn't be acceptable in my mind, your mind, and uh, to bring it to light. Uh, we all that parents that have children, grandchildren, it was devastating. It was an atrocity that happened to uh, the First Nations, uh, the first people here. I was brought to uh, one mansion was that Canada was here for 200 years. The First Nations were here for over 10,000 years. So, you know, and yet the First Nations have been treated like they don't belong here and being treated this way. So anyway, uh, with that, uh, just a happy note, because uh, the happiness is that the children are going home. 215 of them are going home. Whew. So that's, that's what it does to me. And I tell you that it hurt every time. And I hang my head in grief, grieving for the kids, not in shame for her. For I, I, I believe that they're, they're going home and that's what happens today. And that's what happened on the 27th of May. So, uh, and the next, next thing that happened was Orange Shirt Day became a holiday. So they had it on the books and then this happened and then all of a sudden it became a holiday. So uh, thank Canada for that, but shame on Canada for what happened in those uh, schools, shame on the, uh, the church and one that we don't talk about is shame, shame on the Brits for allowing uh, the queen and all these to happen. So it's, we talk about the church, we talk about Canada, but the, the people from uh, the royal family have to take responsibility for some of this too. So, you know, with that, uh, I'm gonna ask for uh, any other reports from uh, councillors, uh, liaisons to uh, the committees. Uh, go ahead, Clay. Uh, there's a Peace Wilson Advisory Committee meeting two weeks ago or last week, maybe. Um, pretty basic uh, updates. I think we all get the letters from BC Hydro, but Site C Dam, it is delayed somewhat uh, due to COVID, but not too, too bad. But sadly, with that is an increased cost. Um, if anybody's driven between Hudson's Hope and Fort St. John lately, it, it really is coming together and the, the road alignment is moving along really nicely. Um, and then another committee that uh, Carol and I have been attending quite regularly and Ellen's had something to do with the Chetland community meeting. meeting. Um, very exciting stuff going on with Tansy Friendship Centre. Far too much to really dive into right now. It could be a meeting on its own. Um, you know, there's a million questions and a couple of answers, uh, but just really an amazing group um, that that we have working there. We're very fortunate in Chetwin to have them. Um, I see Lorella is on with us today. Thanks for, thanks for coming, but um, there's not enough of them, not nearly enough, but the, the people that we have there have, uh, have an amazing amount of heart. Um, and uh, Carol and I have been trying to, you know, provide some, 
some help and structure where we can. We don't know too much of, of what they deal with and what they go through. And, you know, a lot of it stems with, uh, you know, from, from similar situations that Mayor Coutre was just talking about. And, and it's very devastating, the 215 children that we know about. But um, almost equally as devastating are, are the ones that, uh, that came home with a pile of problems and, and the trauma they experienced at these schools. Um, that they survived, but not well. And, and a lot of that backlash is, is still being felt with today and, and Tansy Friendship Center is dealing with a lot of that. Um, they've got some new office space and they're opening up a, a homeless shelter um, with the, and that I, what, I, what I like the, the meeting that we were at, they called these positions peers and there's people that come into the homeless shelter, get help and they're able to work at that shelter themselves. So I'd like to not think of it as a homeless shelter, but a transition shelter to move from from there into a peer opportunity. But anyhow, it's 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 moving, and um, Ellen has provided some help with uh, grant applications, which is a huge help that they sure appreciate, and it's really exciting. And um, I think I'll leave it at that. Hey, thank you, Clay. Uh, any other reports from uh, liaisons or uh, committees? Uh, Mel, Councillor Deck. Yep, so I had one from the Regional Solid Waste Committee meeting. Um, regional District is starting a pilot program for free dumping of uh, domestic bagged waste at the Mulberry Lake uh, Station and the Presbyteru Transfer Station. So they're trying that out in the evenings when they're, they're manned stations and they're normally closed in the evening, but they're going to have anybody that needs to go there after hours, like not everybody's off during the day, so they'll be able to go there and uh, dump their waste. Also the regional district uh, uh, waste to energy program demonstration should be presented to the uh, solid waste committee in August. This is a pretty exciting uh, issue. It could be the, it could be virtually, if it pans out, it could be virtually the end of landfilling. So that, 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 that pretty, we're pretty pumped about that. Well, I am anyway, so, nice. and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Any other uh, liaison that our uh, committee? Good. Okay. I don't. Oh, sorry, Your Worship. I, I I don't have any, but I just want to. Um, uh, I took a look at the administrators' report, and I just want to thank them for putting together an overview of our capital projects from 2016 to 2021. Um, we've been crazy busy, and we have got a lot of stuff done. Unfortunately. Most of it's under the ground and you can't see it, but I mean, it's, it's, um, it's great. And uh, thanks you guys for putting that together. Carol, staff. Um, Your Worship, if it's okay, could uh, we have um, our uh, manager of engineering public works give a run through of the, of that presentation? Uh, yes, uh, Desiree. Um, I'll just pull this up. Yeah. All right. So I was, can you guys hear me okay? I haven't spoken yet. Yes. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to review the capital projects that have been completed in Chetwind over the last five years and uh, touch on how we plan for and prioritize capital spending. Yes. Um, so the stars on the map here represent projects that have been completed, the locations of them over the past five years since 2016. Um, and they mainly fall into one of three categories. Uh, the first category is that there's an immediate need or maybe there's been an emergency. Uh, for instance, maybe, well, we're not meeting our permit requirements, which was the case uh, when we completed the lagoon upgrades. The second category includes projects that help us manage risk. So we're placing aging infrastructure, um, which we, yeah. And that's kind of where our asset management planning really uh, plays a big role. So we would replace them based on the age of the infrastructure um, and maybe any indications that they might fail in the future. Uh, the third category is um, includes projects that improve or extend our existing services. So um, water main roofing would, uh, would in, be included in that category because it will 
improve pressure and health in the water system. Um, so here we go. In 2016, that's when we did those lagoon upgrades that I just mentioned. Uh, that was a pretty big project. Uh, and then we also added a trucked waste receiving facility, so that would be improving our system. And we replaced one of our pressure reducing valve stations, which is more of a category two. Um, let's see here. So the pressure reducing valve station, uh, we replaced that mainly because it was aging, but also because the, the existing pressure reducing valve was below ground and was difficult to access for our uh, for our water and sewer crew. So um, by bringing it above ground and improving the piping, we're able to control our system a bit better and um, control flow between um, pressure zones better. And it's a lot easier to access and WorkSafe is much happier with us. Um, so our truck waste receiving facility, we mainly added that, well, partly because we needed to improve our monitoring of the system. So we needed to, uh, so our new system includes pH and hydrocarbon monitoring, um, which does allow us to keep a better, closer eye on what people are actually dumping into the system. Um, and then there was our lagoon upgrades, which was, yeah, which a really big project and included, um, you can see in the photo here, it included a ton of, uh, aeration additions. Um, you can see all of the, well, I'm not sure, the bubbles, I guess, in those lagoons there. Um, and then it also included, just one second, um, that concrete, that rectangular concrete deep aerated basin kind of on the top right of that image there. Um, so since that was constructed, I've gone over it before, but we've, uh, we've been consistently meeting our permit requirements. So 2017, that's when we did the East Sanitary Trunk Main, um, another pressure reducing valve station, and our sewer out outfall was replaced. Um, let's see. So the East Sanitary Trunk Main, we needed to do this one because the existing pipe was not capable of meeting the peak flows that we were seeing. Um, so there was some sewage that was spilling onto the ground. And so the, the new pipe has substantially increased the capacity um, and, and can meet our, our peak flows now. Um, it also included screening at our lift station and um, an overflow pond at the lift station in case of um, any sort of pump failures, which was actually used last flood season. We also um, replaced our sewer outfall in 2017, and that was because it was um, destroyed in the floods of 2016. So. And as I mentioned, we did replace the other existing pressure reducing valve station with this above ground uh, structure. Um, so 2018, that's when we finished our water treatment plant upgrades. Um, and we were, we completed the 47th Street sewer upgrades project. Um, the water treatment plants, we needed to replace that one because the existing sand filtration system had started to fail. And um, the new system has doubled our capacity um, and has improved our treatment parameters as well. Um, so the 47th Street sewer upgrades, uh, it's part of our annual effort to improve our sewer mains, mainly to reduce inflow and infiltration. Um, so at, that's actually part of one of our permit requirements uh, is that we need to have um, an ongoing inflow and infiltration reduction program. Um, in 2019, we completed the Nicholson Road water main looping, the 47th Ave road reconstruction project, and upgrades to our electrical equipment and pumps at the Highland Pump Station. Um, the water main looping project, well, let's see, actually, well, the 
47th of verse, we replaced all of the services on this stretch of the road and did a full road reconstruction. Um, because after there was a geotechnical engineering study done and um, it turned out that the road base wasn't uh, suitable for long-term use. Um, so Nicholson Road water main looping, we constructed 600 meters of new water main and added five more hydrants to improve uh, fire protection in the area and uh, looping the water mains improves pressure and water quality. Um, so our Hyler pump station upgrades, um, we replaced the original motor control center that was installed in 1976 with a brand new one. Um, so that'll extend the life another 30 years or more. Um, and we replaced the three 75 horsepower vertical turbine pumps um, and this was grant funded. In 2020, that's when we did our sewer upgrades projects on 53rd place and 51st Ave. Um, so we replaced 580 meters of sewer main and um, improved sewer flow and capacity in the system. And again, we were reducing inflow and infiltration. Uh, which reduces our pumping costs at our lift station as well. So this year we have, or yeah, construction has started on the 43rd Street road reconstruction project. Uh, and uh, it'll include replacing 350 meters of water main and sewer main and uh, doing a full road reconstruction. And yeah, this, project was brought on mainly, well, partly because the road has completely failed right near those townhouses there. Um, but also because there's been some, yeah, some regular sewer issues with the sewer main. Um, we do get calls about that quite often. And it's one of the older areas of town. So everything kind of needed to be replaced and it, it worked out well to do it all at the same time. Um, so here kind of, this gives a summary of the, the construction costs. Um, yeah, that kind of fall under each category. Um, it doesn't include our annual paving, um, but it just kind of gives you an idea of, of what we've been investing in water and sewer infrastructure annually um, and new roads as part of our capital projects. And that's kind of it. So I'm not sure if you want me to go back to that slide for questions. Council? I just have a quick question. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Galbraith. With our um, sewage um, lagoon, Desiree, are we, what are we taking for? Um, industrial waste? Um, in terms of how much? Uh, no, um, as to what are we, be, before we had to cut it off because there were, our sewage lagoon couldn't hold or like hold up to it. And now since it's been replaced, we've slowly started to let other trucks dump. So I'm just curious as to who is able to dump there now. So we, um, we did update our, so far nobody's actually applied to dump industrial waste. Um, we do have a permit process for that. Um, and we did have, like I was talking with, with some companies, um, but no one has actually gone through with, with submitting an industrial permit. So yeah, there's, there's, very little industrial waste that's directly connected with them. So it's mostly just residential sewage and stuff like that? Yep, residential and commercial. Okay. We did start um, a program where um, our water sewer crew is doing some random checks at our sewage, at our trucked waste dump. Um, and so some of it's we're just testing for field parameters. So we'll get them to 
dump some of the waste in a bucket and we check the pH, um, pH and temperature and um, one other. Uh, and then some days we'll go and actually take samples and send them off for analysis of, okay. of other parameters too. Okay, thanks. So I see in the, there's re, uh, the replacement of uh, the sewer and roads uh, versus uh, doing one at a time. I know I talked, uh, I believe with uh, uh, the financial officer here, uh, Kevin Franson uh, about that. Uh, it is quite a substantial cost uh, savings, right? When we do dig up a road and do uh, the two uh, sewer and uh, road replacement. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just to give us some insight, uh, is that a good anal analysis? Yeah, you know, I think it's a fair thing to say. Um, it kind of depends, I mean, because you also don't necessarily want to be replacing stuff when it doesn't need to be. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, when it all needs to be replaced, it's definitely good to do it all. Okay. Any more questions for Desiree? Okay. Thank you for that, Desiree. Yeah. Okay, anything to add to it, uh, Carol? Yep, go ahead. Carol? Yeah, sorry, my unmute wouldn't work. Uh, if I could just have a motion to um, receive for information all of um, council's reports and the administrative report, that'd be perfect. I would make that motion. I'll second. Yeah. Second by Councilor Bazandowski. Any discussion? All those in favor? Gary. Okay, moving on. No discussion items, correspondence C1 to C12. Any items here that we need to bring out? Council, councillors? Um, I would like C5 pulled. C5. <clears throat> any other councillors that uh, see any items? Um. What about um, C2, the uh, air monitors? C2's pulled. Any other? Okay. Not seeing any other. Uh, make the motion to uh, get the others for information. They have that motion. So moved. Okay. Second. C1, C3, and C4 to 12. No, I want C5 out. Okay. One, three. Okay, right, correct. Six, six to 12. Yeah. I'll receive for uh, information. Corrected. All any discussion? Any more that need to be brought out? Okay, we're good. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, discuss. Uh, we will discuss C two before five. Okay, air monitor. Go ahead, uh, uh, man. Th there's been uh, some discussion uh, on and off about this over the years. Here, is, is there anything else that's come up? That that uh, anybody can, anybody knows about us. There have been any new monitors put in, or are we getting any any uh, any more feedback or any? And, and I guess in uh, from in Mr. Kalischuk's point of view, uh, any any better uh, monitors in place? Carol, did you have any more information? Um, just uh, the report or the email sent from the Oil and Gas Commission that um, pointed out that the only exceedances were um, for odor and they don't feel that that impacts health at all. And they also provided some links to existing air quality monitoring that's being done by the province um, and being, being monitored by the province anyway. So 
that's all that we've got at this point. I know we have been continually lobbying the province to have air quality done in Chetland, but at this point, the only air quality monitor in Chetland um, tests for particulates, such as from uh, wood ash from the mills, but not for um, the kind of effluent that might come from, say, the Pine River gas plant. Although the Pine River gas plant does have an air quality monitor out there, I'm not sure if they will continue to do so once they've de decommissioned, if they do you know, shut that plant down. So nothing new that I know of. It, but how, how much do those monitors cost? Uh, does anybody know, or like they prohibitively expensive? Yeah. We have heard that um, they're prohibitively expensive if you get a good one. If you get one of the smaller, inexpensive, less um, accurate ones, they're not as expensive as the as the bigger ones. Thank you. So when we, when we uh, talk about expense, we're talking about $60,000, Carol? Yeah. And we would also need to have somebody who was trained to um, interpret the results, which is, there are some results online. Some of them from the Pine River gas plant are quite easy to see, but the ones from um, the other tests that they've taken are extremely difficult and complex to interpret. So we need to have somebody who could do that for us as well. Okay, uh, Councillor Galbraith. Hi, yeah, so thank you. Um, wh wh what's ever happened to our discussions like with Northern Health and you know, you talk about a healthy community and we breathe the air and they, they were gonna try to work with us to get air quality monitoring. And I, I don't think they've been back to us since. And that was what, two years ago or three years ago, we sat and talked with them, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I haven't uh, heard anything back from them. And uh, I just some information was to, we tried, uh, every time we talk about air, air quality, I give it to the private sector. And uh, I thought we had one that might do it. I can't really tell you the name because if I do, then it goes into that. <laughs> uh, that yeah, the mayor said, but uh, we do give it out to private sector saying that we need this because we need to monitor air for uh, people outside, uh, joggers, bikers, hikers. So we give them all that. And uh, yes, and to Northern Health, they haven't really, they're really not uh, seem to be Northern Health for some reason that uh, monitors uh, might be on, uh, I'm not sure what, what they're thinking when when they talk about uh, monitoring and says, well, the health is okay. So why, why do we need to monitor the air quality? But uh, Dr. Kim, I believe with, doctor, uh, with uh, Northern Health, we gave that to him when he came aboard as- uh, uh, That's exactly right, yep, yeah. And we brought it to him, his attention, and he was going to look into it. And I believe that's when we, we found out what the monitors were, were worth. So maybe the cost factor so uh, maybe one of the things that uh, Chetlin and uh, council and the citizens, maybe we have to go out and uh, purchase one and find somebody that might uh, might take it on as uh, interpreting the information that we need so that the quality of our air is always monitored uh, for uh, Chetlin because we brought one on, right? So yes, uh, Rochelle, very good point about uh, Northern Health and. I, I believe that uh, they, they haven't uh, responded in a positive way. So hopefully the private sector, we had one that uh, said, oh, geez, that's uh, very, good, very good. And I thought they might come aboard. Until then, I, I will have to keep it under wraps to who uh, mentioned that to me. So anyway, we, we've been on top of it every, every chance we have. Uh, to mention it to any uh, bodies, and that's to the ministers too. We do bring that up. Okay, thanks, Mel. Anything else uh, you got there for air quality? Okay, you're good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, nothing on that one. C five. Yeah, um, I, I guess I have kind of a question. Um, it's just saying that they're going to start resurfacing Wabi Estate subdivision. 
um, and from Mount Solitude to Stone Creek. I'm just wondering, do they contact the people that are living at Wabi Estate subdivision just to give them a heads up that they'll be in the neighborhood doing this work? I'm just curious if we know that. I can tell you that the only notification we got was seeing the sign go up on the road and the surveyors. Oh, okay. So you do kind of have an idea of what's happening then. Yeah, but it was time. all done word of mouth. We didn't actually talk to anybody. Hmm, interesting. Thanks, Jocelyn. Um, do you want me to make a motion to receive, receive them two reports? Yes. Uh, motion to receive C2 and C5. We need a second. A second. And there was a comment from uh, the Chamber of Commerce too, okay. Laura. Okay, oh, sure. Okay. Let's have a look at that. I missed that one. Uh, uh oh. No, she's just saying ditto for, for Stone Creek Way. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we'll add that. Okay, uh, we've got a motion with the added uh, ditto. Okay, all those in favor? Two items, okay, carry. Information items. I'll make a motion to receive information items one through 19. I would second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, not hearing any. All those in favor? Carried. Reports for action, RA1, Union of BC Municipalities uh, Convention Registration. I'll make that recommendation that all members of council be authorized to be registered for the UBCM convention to be held virtually September 13th to 17th, 2021. I'll second that. Councilor Wise, give her seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? RA2, Business Facade Improvement Program Application 2021. I'll make that recommendation. Oh. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead, Clay. I'll second it. <laughs> Clay. Long one. Authorize the Business Facade Improvement Program grant application for 5217 South Access Road, Chowton, BC, included as attachment A to this report. Um, authorize a $250 development permit application fee be waived. Authorized issuance of development permit permit number 05 2021 included as attachment data this report to permit facade improvements to the existing structure on the property of 5217 South Access Road. And authorize the mayor uh, and corporate officer to ex execute partnering agreement with Ambleside Land Limited at 5217 South Access Road Show in BC included as attachment B to this report. I would second that. Councilor Galbra seconds, any discussion? I'm just curious as if to me, if, uh, well, a couple things. So is this for the $5,000 facade improvement? Okay, and then um, any idea what Ambleside it has planned. Yeah, Carol. They have attached some concept drawings to the report, um, so you can see kind of an artist's concept of what they have planned. They are, um, it's the old former um, China Walk building, so they're creating commercial space in there. I don't know if they have a tenant at this point, but last time I talked to the property owner, they had been approached by several tenants, so he was quite excited about that space. Excellent. Thanks, Carol. <clears throat> Any more questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Carried. 
RA3, Tansy Community Emergency Shelter funding application. I would make that motion that council approve a partnership with the Tansy Friendship Center for the proposed Tansy Community Emergency Shelter grant funding application and that council approve submission of the application to UBCM Safe Restart Funding Strengthening Community Services Program Grant. I'll second that. Council work second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. RA4, Spray Park, SiteWorks Contract Award. I make that recommendation that Council award the Spray Park SiteWorks Contract to Place Space Adventures Limited at the bid price of 152000 plus GST. Need a second? I'll second that. Councilor Deck, second. Discussion? So, it, um, well, sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, so is that is that the whole water park then done or is that just the prep work or what is that? Staff. Um, could I ask Desiree, um, our manager of public works and engineering to weigh in on that? Desiree? Um, yeah, so this is for the award of um, the site work and, and actual park installation. Um, so the concrete, can you hear me guys? Okay. Um, and electrical work and um, yeah, actually in, in putting together the, the spray park that's already been purchased. So the 152,000 is uh, part of the, the price or it is the lowest bid or the best bid? The 159,000 is the, the lowest bid for completing that work. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good, Mel. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Oh, we're good. We're good, Rochelle. We, we could go. I, I just had a quick question. It's yes. like, are they going to? try to get this done sooner than later or? Um, yep, once it's been awarded, uh, they said that they can complete the installation by mid, oh, I'll have to go back in my emails. I don't wanna say the wrong thing, but soon. Um, and they are a company, they're a company out of the lower mainland uh, that they're, all of their relevant experience was spray park, spray park, spray park, spray park. So they, they seem to come with a really good resume. Okay, thanks, Desiree. So midsummer. Yeah. I think the question is like, it's going to be used this year. I hope so. Go ahead, uh, uh, Councilor Deck. Uh, they're from down south. If they put one in where it freezes in the ground. <laughs> um, I'd have to look into that, but um, I'm pretty sure I saw some northern ones, but that'll be northern, you know, the aspects of, of our design um, okay. that they'll be installing to. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay. A any more discussion? <laughs> Good questions. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Larry. RA5, presentation of draft 2020 financial statement by, by Director of Finance Administration. I think that's you, Mr. Franson. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Um, did you want to do this now or do you want to finish off the rest of your agenda before I try to put everybody to sleep? Uh, should we table this till the end of uh, our what do we got here? We've got uh, surplus. Three items. Active and April accounts payable. So, okay, let's, uh, can we, we'll table this till the end of the, we'll move it RA5 to uh, follow RA7. How's that? Sure. Okay. We don't need no motion, Carol, to, uh, just move an item as long as we deal with it. 
Um, I, actually, if I could have a motion to vary the agenda, that'd be great. I'll okay. make that motion. I would second. Okay. All those in favor of vary, varying the agenda? Carried. Okay, moving on to RA6, sale of surplus equipment. I'll make that motion that council approve the sale of the following equipment, 1990 Suzuki pickup truck with carry deck, 1992 Suzuki pickup truck with dump deck, 2000 and more, 2001 Ford service truck, and a gravel soil screener. Do I have a second? I would second that. Okay. Uh, Councilor Wise, Gruber, second. Okay. Okay, uh, discussion. Uh, how yeah. will they? Uh, how will they be getting getting rid of them? Uh, just out of curiosity, or disposing of them, or. Desiree, or is that you or is Carol? Carol? Uh, I just say Desiree has some ideas. Um. Yeah. So, I think we'll be we'll we'll be advertising them, and I think we'll be. Um, asking for people to submit sealed bids for them. Uh, I know I've talked to Kevin and we don't think that an auction would bring us the best value. Um, so yeah, so we're thinking sealed bids. Thank you. And uh, one of the concerns that the, the mayor brought up prior to today's sale is uh, the past sales and uh, how our equipment uh, was identified and some of the vehicles that were uh, purchased from uh, the district of Chetwin looked like they still had logos of the district of Chetwin. So we need to make sure that we aren't associated with uh, whatever that vehicle is doing after we, uh, we sail it or give it to whoever. So that was one of my concerns that the district is not Perceived as still being the owner of that truck or or that uh, equipment. That's a good point, and I, I think we'll plan to make sure that we remove all of the decals and any identification marks before we sell. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. RA7, Active Transportation Planning funding, funding Application. I will move that council approve the application to UBCM for the Chetwin Official Community Plan through the Active Transportation Planning Grant. Do I have a second? Councilor Deck, second. Discussion? All those in favor? Carry. Okay, we will continue with RA5, presentation of the draft 2020 financial statement by uh, Director of Finance Administration. Kevin? Okay, so um, you've all seen the statements in the package. Did you want me to share it on the screen or? Yes, let's uh, council. Any objections to? Uh... No objections to sharing it on the uh, screen. It'll just save me from doing it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So can you see that then? Yes, I can. Yep. Okay. Um, so the 2020 financial statements, um, right now we'll get this, um, at the end of this, I'd like council to be able to give me a motion to approve these statements and then we'll have the auditors report and you'll see them again one more time. But, uh, this is basically the, the final for the year. So at the end of the year, we had $10 million in the bank, uh, $1.8 million in receivables. The MFA deposit is in and out. You'll see it a few lines below under liabilities as well. So we had total assets of just under 12 million. Um, 
liabilities for accounts payable of a million dollars, deferred revenue of 600,000, uh, and long-term debt of 3.6 million, total liabilities of 5.5 million. So we had a net financial asset position of about $6.5 million, which um, is quite good. It's a very healthy position. Non-financial assets, we had an inventory, which is made up primarily of sand and salt for uh, winter roads. Uh, prepaid expenses, which is mostly insurance and memberships and some advertising that's bought a little bit before the year end and used after. And then our tangible capital assets, which is everything we own for 52 million. So we had a total accumulated surplus at the end of the year of 58,700,000, uh, up slightly from last year, but not a lot. On the statement of operations, you can see how the year went. We took in 3.2 million in property taxes, um, 228,000 for sale of uh, services to other governments, which is mostly um, administration fee around the rec center and uh, a couple other small things. Sale of services of 1.8 million, which is for a large part is our water, sewer and garbage collections. Um, other revenues of 800,000, a lot of that has to do with uh, lease revenue and those kind of things. Government transfers of 4.8 million, which includes uh, the Peace River Agreement funds. And we yes, lost- Yes, Kevin, I don't think the year you've gone to the next page, have you? We, no. We're not I, seeing- Sorry, I turned seeing. it on, I turned it <laughs> where I got my notes and I didn't move it there, sorry. Thank you. Uh, and we lost uh, on some disposal of some assets of about 56, $57,000. Total income for the year of just under 11 million. We spent 1.7 on general, what we call general government services, 800,000 on protective services, 2.5 on transportation or public works, 2.2 on uh, the water and sewer functions, 130,000 on public health, and $1 million in community development, which is includes the parks as well as the economic development functions. Total of 8.4 million um, we spent during the year, left us with a net income for the year of 2.3 million. Started the year at 56 million, we finished it at the 58 million. Um, total accumulated surplus at the end of the year. So this page is just basically shows where the cash went for the year. So we took in 2.3 million for net income. If we add back our amortization, which is a non-cash expense and the loss on the disposal, um, we had a net increase in our receivables. So that's cash that we didn't receive. We sold off that final chunk of uh, the land from the old hotel. So that's an increase in our cash. Okay, um, decrease in our inventories and small increase in prepaids. Uh, we had a decrease in accounts payable, so we put out more cash to do that and an increase in deferred, which effectively means we had more cash in the bank. So total cash flow from operations, we had $4.3 million. We purchased a little over $2 million in assets this year. Uh, the 90,000 proceeds is the insurance settlement on the garage. And then we repaid one point or $170,000 in long-term debt. So it meant we had a net change in our cash of 2.2 million, started the year at 7.7 .7 and we finished at $10 million. If I go through this too fast, by all means, please stop me. It's trying not to bore you too much with this, so. Uh, so the number that the, um, the accounting boards want you to concentrate on is net financial assets. So you had a, a surplus at the beginning of the, uh, for the year of 2.3 million. We take off our capital assets we purchased, we add back the amortization, 
you know, the loss on disposal comes in, the proceeds and all the rest of it. And we had a net increase in our financial assets of just about 2.3 million uh, for an in for a year end total of $6.5 million. Uh, and again, that's quite a healthy financial position. Uh, you know, some municipalities will have an will have a net deficit in that spot. So, you know, I feel that we're doing quite well there. The accounting policies, I'm not going to, to read out to you. You're welcome to, to go through them at your leisure. If you have any questions, by all means, please ask me about them. But this is basically what lays out all the, the assumptions and stuff that uh, management makes in order to create the financial statements that you're looking at. So. So then uh, under the notes, we've, again, this is just a breakdown of our, um, of our uh, cash balance. So we had $1,800 in cash on hand. So tills it here, the rec center, those kind of things, some petty cash funds, not much. Uh, the general bank, 2.3 million, and then our MFA deposits and the rest of it at 7.6 million. Again, back to our $10 million bank balance. Um, we do have an operating line of credit. We don't use it. It's there as a safety net if we do need it. So um, the accounts receivable, primarily made up of um, our trade receivables, which is mostly things like some airport leases and some mice rentals. Uh, the due from other governments, the majority of that is was due to us from the regional district for fourth quarter rec center stuff. Uh, there's a little bit from the province that was due and we had a, a about $50,000 in GST that was due at the end of the year. So, and I believe all of those have been received now. So, uh, property taxes at the end of the year, 218,000, you can see it's slightly down from the previous year, but it's in the area that we are, we seem to be every year right in that area. And utilities up slightly, but uh, that would have just been the fourth quarter billing would have just been a little bit higher. So that entire thing would be related to our fourth quarter billing on water and sewer. So um, our MFA deposit, uh, if you want me to go over this, I can, it's, uh, it's just a, a balance sheet item that we keep, but it's all related to our long-term debt. Uh, so accounts payable, trade accounts payable, just our general, you know, everyday operating bills that we have, everything from gas and hydro to, you know, vehicle repairs or whatever. Um, holdbacks, trust funds and payables, things like, um, Oh, we've got some um, some holdbacks related to capital projects at the end of the year. Uh, we've got some money that actually the regional districts that we're, that we're holding over some other agreements that that's where I keep it. And we had an employer health tax of 80 grand that was due at the end of the year. Um, wages and other benefits of 280,000 at the end of the year just you know, right in line with the previous year, it's right in that same area. And then other government and agencies and 40,000 is just school taxes and those kind of things that uh, we have to remit and get remitted after the year end. So just sits there briefly. Deferred revenue of 660,000, uh, the 437 in capital grants, the majority of that is related to the debris trap that, uh, we haven't quite got finished as of the year end. Uh, Des is still working on getting that one finished. So um, we had a, a small grant for uh, some fire department equipment that was sitting in there. Um, the lease revenue, again, and mostly related to um, airport leases and those kind of things. 
utility charges of 103,000. Um, this is some utilities and property taxes that were prepaid. Basically, a few people pay, pay it in advance. So this is the stuff that was sitting in advance. And then other deferred revenue, and that's um, our prepaid water and sewer, at the bulk service station for the most part, that's where that is. People have put money on deposit and just haven't used it all yet. So, so note eight, um, our long-term debt. Issue 131 is the uh, related to the medical clinic. So we have one point, just about 1.3 million still owing on that. Uh, issue 141 is the uh, sewer treatment plant. And then issue 145 is related to the East Trunk Main. And at the end of the year, we have a, a total debt outstanding of 3.6 million. So. And if anybody's curious, just as a comparison from what um, the act allows versus what we where we are. Our annual debt servicing costs right now are about 256,000. So that's our our principal payments that are noted on this page as well as the interest charges. So we pay about $256,000 a year for debt servicing. And based on the province's formula, we're actually entitled to two, we could we could borrow to them to a point where 2.5 million is our maximum allowable debt servicing. So we're well under our maximum debt levels. Note nine, um, so our tangible capital assets. So land, we didn't really have any transactions in land this year. We had what well, we had at the beginning of the year stayed in buildings uh, we started with 12 million 400 we the 158 in additions is the parks garage and the fire department uh, trailer that we put in uh, and then the old garage was was taken out under equipment we uh, well we bought the the wildland truck for the fire department and there's some electronic stuff that was added in for the for the fire department vehicles. Uh, parks vehicles after we lost the garage, we lost the three mowers. So the replacement of them and the gator and um, some other equipment that, oh, and there was also some playground equipment that was bought for 42,000. There's uh, some fencing, one pickup truck and some other minor equipment that was purchased in all of that. The $182,000 in disposal is mostly related to the stuff that we lost in the garage fire from the preview from early in January. Infrastructure, the $314,000 addition is um, about $150,000 in paving. And then the pathway lighting project that didn't quite make it into 2019's annual report. We actually finished it up in January of 2020. So it shows up as part of that 314,000. The water fund, the, we finished off the high lift in there. The 282 is, is getting rid of the old one. Uh, under the sewer, we had uh, the couple of big sewer projects, 53rd place and 51st Avenue, I believe. So that's the total of them. And, you know, to give you an idea how much more it costs to do things now, they cost us $15,000 to do originally and just short of a million dollars to replace them. So, and then the work in progress, we, the majority of the, of this is money that we've got invested in the debris trap project so far. So the the bottom half of this schedule just shows the amortization by um, by the different components. So 
the total of 1.8 million in amortization is spread out between the buildings and the machinery and equipment. And then the, any of the stuff that we disposed of, we add back the, the depreciation that we recap, it's called referred to as recaptured depreciation. So that left us with a uh, net book value of our assets at the end of the year, line, line across the bottom, totaling up to the 52 million that uh, I mentioned back on the balance sheet. So our accumulated surplus of 58 million, it's made up of um, some restricted reserve funds, which is our capital reserve. And um, and I'm going blank as far as which ones are in that right at the moment, sorry. Uh, but some of our reserves we refer to as restricted because they have some bylaws that create them. And then we have the non-restricted reserves, which are just created by council motion and those kind of things. So. We got two million in restricted and five and a half million in unrestricted reserves. Uh, the general fund has a million dollar surplus. The water and sewer funds are at 700 and 900 respectively. And then our equity and capital assets of 48 million. So a total of 58 million in, in assets at the end of the year. The On the income statement, there was uh, the 3.2 million in property taxes, it's just, we took in just short of six. And that, all the stuff in brackets is what we took in for other governments. So we took in 1.1 for the school and 1.1 for the regional district and 300,000 for the hospital. And then uh, the joint boards is MFA and uh, BC Assessment Authority. Took in 100,000 of them, which left us with 3.2 at the end of it. So that percentage is a little bit higher this year than normal. You'll see that we're down a bit. That's due in large part to the uh, province for the COVID uh, relief. They cut in major industry taxes quite drastically. So we collected a lot less, but we paid a lot less to the, to the school for that as well. So. The pension and post-retirement benefit plan, uh, it's a note generated by the municipal pension authority that we're required to, to add to our statements. Most important part of this is that during 2020, we paid $306,000 for employee in, or for employer contributions to the plan during the year. Just uh, a, a note that reconciles our financial plan back to our budget. So the financial plan has a zero balance on it. Um, if you add back the tangible capital assets, because they don't come out of that as far as an expense, they come out in other ways on our on our income statement. So we add that back. We add back the principal debt payment and the transfers to reserves. The internal, internal equipment charges are just an in and out both sides. And then we transfer some money into reserves and the amortization the, that we booked in the budget. And it leaves us with the 1.9 or 1.6 million, 06 million in net income. And that ties back onto our statement of operations in the budget column. The notes on segmented disclosure Disclosure just basically show says what each of the individual departments or segments represents. And then this page is, it's all the same stuff that was on the previous one. Um, the one thing I'll note is on the page that you guys got in your agenda, the the salaries column or row, the materials row and the amortization row, those numbers had brackets around them. That was just a, a presentation issue I had, I dealt with. So um, they've been taken off. The, the totals didn't change. It was just how they were being presented. So, so basically under general government, uh, which is where we put most of our of our revenue items. We took in just about eight million and paid out 
1.7 million in the various different categories. And then again, protective services in the next column over and public works and go through the, the whole batch of them. And at the end of it, the 2020 column ties back into the, to the first page with our, or the statement of operations and shows our $2.3 million um, surplus for the year. So this is just basically a breakdown of all the different where departments that we charge it to, but it's all part of the same fund. So, and the very last page is a new one now that uh, we have to report on until this money is gone. But in November, the province gave us 955,000 for the COVID restart grant. Um, this is the allocation that uh, I had presented to council and council had authorized. So we have an ending balance of 599,000 in that uh, in that fund and we'll find ways to, to spend that over the next year or two and then we can move on. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, <clears throat> Hey, Kevin, just for uh, the public's information, we talked about our garage, right? And yes. just for information, we have we store our equipment in a garage on uh, property that Chetwin owns and then it had burnt, right? Yeah, we had we lost a, a garage to a fire in uh, January of 2020. And so uh, we had, uh, it was primarily used for the, well, exclusively used for parks equipment and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, we had a loss related to that. Uh, the building itself, we got an insurance payout of a little over 90,000 for that. And we've just within the last week, uh, actually settled the, insurance claim around the uh, equipment. So we'll have some money coming in this year to cover off some of that equipment that, that we ended up having to replace. Okay. Okay, you talked about the trap, uh, the, the, the debris trap. And yes. how, how much more money do you have to uh, clear that off the budget? I believe we've got about another quarter of a million dollars that will be spent in um, 2021. Okay. Any questions for uh, finance? No, mine was just on the debris traps and uh, how, like how long is it gonna be before we get them installed and like what is it that we're waiting for? I will defer to Desiree on that one. I um, so right now we're we're still waiting on DFO. They've been really extra critical of every piece of information that we've put forward. Um, it's been a pretty frustrating experience. Uh, so right now um, we're we have a permit application in to conduct a fish habitat survey um, on Windrum Creek because right now. Um, we can't say that it's not fish bearing. Um, so we need to just do uh, some additional study on that. I was under the impression that when we applied for this money, maybe I'm mistaken, that, that we had everything, all of our ducks in a row and we, well, our fish in a row or ducks. And uh, that when we applied for this, that's why we got the funding for this. And now the DFO was holding us up. Is that right? Uh, no, we didn't have any of the permits in place. Um, we assumed that this would be a similar process as other projects, but they required a lot more of us. Um, and yeah, and, and so to, to actually get the application into DFO, we needed to have the a full design um, and all sorts of mitigation planning and um, ready to go. Okay, thanks, Desiree. Yep. Okay, any more questions? Finance? 
I think I lost my screen. Can you still hear me? Okay, there we go. Okay. So your worship, if I could get a motion to uh, approve the financial statements as presented. I would make that motion to approve the financial statements as presented. Second. I'll second that. Okay, Councilor Deck seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Councilor Disher. Good. Councilor Wark, we're good. I don't see Councilor Wark, so. Okay, we've, the motion uh, passes. Okay, thank you, Kevin, for your report. Thank you. All right. One more, one more item. I think it's RA1, April accounts payable checklist. We've got a checklist. Go ahead. Did somebody speak? Yes. Uh, we're looking for a motion. Okay, or... yes, I can make that motion. Sorry, I just thought somebody was attempting to um, make the motion that the check register for the month of April 2021 totaling $719,501.57 be received. Second by uh, Councillor Bezendowski. I have a question. You've got a discussion question. Yes, uh, go ahead, Councillor uh, Weisgerber. I just have actually two questions on there. If someone could tell me what is Perfect Mind Inc. Perfect Mind Inc. is uh, a recreation booking software that the uh, rec center is replacing their old one with. The old one is um, not uh, being supported or uh, maintained anymore. So it needed to be replaced. Okay, and I have one other question. What is Commotion Creek doing for us that we're paying them so much money for? I believe Commotion Creek is was doing some um, flood mitigation work from la some of the flood from last um, spring that we were getting cleaned up some of the creek work this year. Oh, okay, awesome. Thank you. Any more uh, questions? Okay, good motion. All in favor? Gary. Okay, there's no new business. Okay, German. So moved. Oh, public questions. Sorry, uh, Laura. Uh, no, public that's fine. Questions. Any public uh, questions at this time? Not hearing any, uh, adjournment. Go ahead, uh, Council Weisgerber. So moved. Second. Okay. So do we sign back in with the old, with the same in-camera 